It's Friday, May 26th here at Rocket Lab Mission Control as we await the liftoff of our 37th Electron launch, once again from Pad B at Launch Complex 1. Hello and welcome to Launch Day. You're joining us live for our broadcast of Coming to a Storm Near You, a dedicated launch for NASA to deploy the second half of the Tropics constellation. I'm Imogen Ray. And I'm Keegan Black, and we're excited to have you join us for another Tropics launch. It's also an extra special day for us here at Rocket Lab as we celebrate the sixth anniversary of Electron's first launch. We're targeting liftoff for 3.46pm New Zealand time, which makes it a late launch for our West Coast US viewers at 8.46pm Pacific, and a super late 11.46pm Eastern for our East Coast viewers. Whatever time it is where you are, thank you for joining us, and we hope you're well topped up with coffee. Today's launch is the second of two for NASA to deploy the Tropics Constellation, which stands for Time Resolved Observations of Precipitation Structure and Storm Intensity with a constellation of small sats. This innovative constellation of four CubeSats will monitor the formation and evolution of tropical cyclones, including hurricanes, and will provide rapidly updating observations of storm intensity. This data will help scientists better understand the processes that affect these high-impact storms, ultimately leading to improved modelling and prediction to help save lives. Here's more from NASA about the Tropics mission. Here's a question. How does a group of satellites, each no more than a foot long, help improve forecasts for tropical storms and hurricanes? Well, let's take a look. Hurricanes are some of the most powerful and destructive weather events on Earth. The 2020 Atlantic hurricane season was brutal, producing a record-breaking 30 named storms. What's more, 10 of those storms were characterized as rapidly intensifying, some throttling up by 100 miles per hour in under two days. Many weather satellites will generally measure a storm only once every few hours, leaving gaps in coverage where a storm may quickly strengthen. To help fill this observation gap, NASA is launching Tropics, a collection of satellites designed to make a big impact on our understanding of damaging storms. Their mission? To provide near-hourly observations of a storm's precipitation, temperature, and humidity, allowing scientists to better understand what drives a storm's intensification. To achieve this, researchers at MIT's Lincoln Laboratory developed a miniaturized microwave radiometer that's about the size of a cup of coffee. This small instrument will measure storm strength by detecting the thermal radiation naturally emitted by the oxygen and water vapor in the air. As Earth's climate continues to change, cost-effective but powerful satellites like Tropics will be an important tool to help us better observe developments driving rapid changes in powerful storms and help forecasters better predict and prepare for the weather ahead. We are so proud to be supporting Tropics and grateful to be once again working with our mission partners at NASA. Just over two weeks ago on May 8th, Electron lifted off for the first of these two dedicated launches and successfully deployed two Tropics CubeSats to a 550 kilometre circular altitude above Earth at an inclination of about 30 degrees. All four of the Tropics CubeSats need to be launched to their operational orbits within a 60 day period, but the sooner the better, which is why we're back on the pad just 18 days later, ready to go to space again. Let's catch a replay of that mission, Rocket Like a Hurricane. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have liftoff. Vehicle has cleared the pad, we'll save the launch pad. Beginning pitch over. Stage 1 propulsion is nominal. Fifteen seconds to Miko. Stage separation successful. Hearing separation successful. Stage two propulsion is still nominal. HVB discharge nominal, approaching hot swap in roughly 30 seconds. 
Pulse was successful. Battery jettison confirmed. Payload deployment confirmed. Tropics has been a massive team effort with the science team led by the Lincoln Laboratory at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and others including researchers from NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration or NOAA and several universities and commercial partners. So with one launch down, we're excited to get the next away today ahead of the North American hurricane season. Just like our first Tropics launch, today's mission is flying from Pad B at Rocket Lab Launch Complex 1, our private orbital spaceport on New Zealand's Mahia Peninsula. As we approach the final minutes in the countdown, our launch operators at Range Control in Mahia and here in Rocket Lab's Mission Control are working through their final checks before liftoff. Commanding this overall effort is Launch Director Julia van Bacher. Shortly, Yulia will ask all operators for an update on their launch status to determine if they are good to proceed with today's planned launch. This is called the Go No Go poll, where operators will indicate if their systems are green, go for launch, or red, which means they're working an issue. Let's listen into that poll for all greens and goes and across the board. This is LDN mission code. We are proceeding now with the Go No Go sequence stage. Status go. Avionics. Avionics, go. Gen C. GNC is go. Vcon. Vcon is go. T1. T1 is go. GC. GC is go. PLS. PLS is go. RSO. RSO is go. Met. Met polling for go, no go. Coming back later to it. RF. RF LDN mission code. RF is code. Thank you. MM. MM is go. And MET. MET is go. LD sub. LD sub is go. The go no go sequence is now complete. We are T minus 11 minutes and 58 seconds in counting. We are go for terminal count at T minus 10 minutes. From this time, the three-way procedure is in effect. Fantastic news there from Mission Control. All greens across the board, which is what we want to hear. We are go for launch, which means we are coming to a storm near you very soon indeed. We are on track for a liftoff of 3.46 p.m. New Zealand time today, in about 10 minutes from now. Today, with this Tropics launch, we're also celebrating a special anniversary for our favourite rocket. On May 25th, six years ago from Launch Complex 1, Electron took to the skies for the very first time. As it crossed the Kármán line and completed a perfect first stage burn, stage separation, second stage ignition and fairing separation, Electron became the first orbital class rocket successfully launched from a private launch site and opened up a new era in, reg in regular and reliable launch for small satellites. The flight also ticked a few other world firsts. The first launch for an all-carbon composite rocket with the world's first 3D printed engines powered by a completely new electric pump fed cycle. 36 launches and 161 satellites deployed to space later. Today we're ready to launch our latest pair of sats to space on Electron and wish it a very happy sixth launch anniversary as it flies. Today's launch will be our 37th Electron mission, but the way we go to space for the two Tropics launches is a little different from a standard Electron mission to low Earth orbit. 
The launch follows a standard format for the, for the first six or so minutes of the mission. Electron will lift off from the pad thanks to the nine Rutherford engines on the rocket's first stage. These engines will burn for around two and a half minutes, lofting Electron to about 90 kilometres above Earth's surface. From here, Electron's first and second stages will separate, with the spent first stage falling back to Earth. Shortly after this, a single vacuum optimised Rutherford engine will ignite on Electron's second stage to propel the kick stage and Tropics CubeSats for another seven minutes, positioning them at that 550 kilometre altitude. This is where the mission departs from our standard format. Typically, Electron's second stage takes the kick stages and payloads to an elliptical orbit, and we use the small 3D printed Curie engine on the kick stage to circularize the orbit. For the Tropics launches, the second stage is used to circularize the orbit, and instead, the kick stage's Curie engine conducts what's called a plane change maneuver to position the Tropics CubeSats at an inclination of 30 degrees, the best spot for monitoring the formation of tropical storms. Here's more from Guidance, Navigation and Control Team Lead, George Buchanan. I'm Dr George Buchanan, Guidance, Navigation and Control Engineer Team Lead, but you can just call me George. The GNC team, Guidance, Navigation and Control, is in charge of making sure that Electron gets to the right orbit. So the inclination of an orbit is the tilt. So a zero degree basically means that you're going all the way around the equator. 90 degree means that you're going up and over the North Pole and the South Pole. So with a normal Electron, we'll go to a transfer orbit with our stage two. So that means that we're in around about the right orbit, but slightly, slightly too low. And then we use our kick stage just to boost us up before we deploy payloads. So for Tropics, we've got to do a couple of sneaky things. So firstly, we do a dog leg, which is basically where our trajectory actually bends around. And so we head up north rather than heading out east. And then we sort of curve as we're flying. And then the second thing which we have to do is we use our kick stage to do an on-orbit inclination change, which basically tilts the orbit which we're in to be in the right one. So for tropics between liftoff and payload deployment, most of it will look very similar. However, what's a little bit different for tropics is that we'll be at the right altitude already. So if you're watching, you look carefully at the video and also at the, the altitude overlay, you'll see that we're much higher than normal. So we go into a coast until we get close to the equator, and at that point, our kick stage will light its Curie engine and do an inclination change. We'll actually be pointing sideways and burning sideways. So we'll be traveling up along this way and actually thrusting at right angles to that, which is, which is highly unusual, but it's what you need to do to do this change. Shortly after that, we'll do a payload deployment. And so we'll actually be deploying outside of ground station range. And so we won't have live confirmation of that until we get over our ground stations in Europe. Yes, so we've done this manoeuvre before. In fact, we did it for the first Tropics mission just a couple of weeks ago. And um, we expect it to do exactly the same thing. We'll head up north, do a dog leg, inclination change, and deploy some more satellites into orbit. What the fixed stage gives us is a lot more flexibility on orbit. And so we can do a lot of missions which a traditional large launch vehicle may not be able to do. So we can wait before doing burns. We can light up to you know, dozens of times with this little kick stage and we can point it in any direction we want to. It's also fairly flexible because it's, it's this photon bus, we can change it. So sometimes we'll add additional batteries so we get a longer mission or we'll change the amount of RCS if we want to do a lot more maneuvering and pointing. When a customer comes to us with some interesting requirements, then we sit down as a team and work out how we can get Electron to meet these. And so this will be doing a bunch of simulations to make sure the trajectories will get us to the right orbit. We'll also run tests on actual hardware to make sure that we can meet any requirements that way. Um, sometimes we'll do things like change the design of the vehicle, so we'll be talking to other teams. And this is something which Electron being quite customizable and being really agile is great for. Yeah, I really love these science missions. Being able to do something which you know is actually going to have a really positive impact on millions of people, it's um, something really special. We look forward to hearing confirmation in around 30 minutes from now that the kick stage has completed that plane change manoeuvre and the final Tropics CubeSats are safely in orbit. We're just four minutes away now from launch. Two minutes before liftoff, the ground power supply at the launch pad is disabled and Electron switches to internal power. Our launch safety system, the Autonomous Flight Termination System, will be enabled at the same time and we can expect to hear both of those calls from our operators in mission control. The liquid oxygen supply valves on stages one and two will be closed a few seconds later, shortly followed by another operator confirming that LOX load is complete.
Then with under 60 seconds to lift off, the propellant tanks will be at their optimum pressure levels for launch. Ground control will then confirm that the water deluge system on the pad is ready to be activated for when the engines on the rocket ignite for launch. This is what will cause the large white cloud of water vapour at liftoff. At T minus 10 seconds, you'll hear the launch director counting down to liftoff. Those nine Rutherford engines we've mentioned before will ignite at T minus three seconds and the launch pad's hold down mechanisms will be released. Electron will then take to the skies for its 37th launch and the final Tropics CubeSats will be on their way to space. Let's listen in for that final launch sequence. To all operators, this is LDO mission code. From now on, there should be no red flags on your critical LCCs. Vicon LD on mission code. LD Vicon. Vicon, please lock the auto sequence and confirm. Confirmed. Thank you, and Vicon, please confirm that all expected primary flight computer ESCOs are green. Confirmed. Thank you. To everyone on mission code, we are go for auto sequence start at T minus two minutes. LDs go for launch. Vehicle is on internal power. AFTS is green and ready for launch. Locks load is complete, system is in recirculation. Anti geysering is disabled. Stage one, stage two, press for flight. High purge, flow, engine purge enabled. Deluge activated. And T minus 19 seconds and counting. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one.
each PB discharge number. And that is a beautiful liftoff for Electron. The final two Tropic satellites are on their way and coming to a storm near you. With Electron now having cleared the pad, the next milestone is max Q. This is the point where the forces on Electron are at their greatest. So we'll listen out for clearance of that key moment from Mission Control soon. at Max-Q. And there we have it. Electron has passed through Max-Q and continues on the way to space. Right now, Electron is travelling at over 2,000 kilometres per hour and is at an altitude of 20 kilometres. Now, coming up next is main engine cutoff, or MECO, where the nine Rutherford engines on Electron's first stage shut down to make way for separation between the first and second stages. Okay, Within seconds, the single space-optimised Rutherford engine on the second stage will ignite to carry the kick stage and the Tropic satellites all the way to orbit. That should take place shortly at around T plus two and a half minutes so let's listen in to that call from Mission Control. Stage one propulsion still nominal. Please stand by for me on roughly 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds to Miko. AOS at Chenham Station. Entered burnout to tech mode. And Miko confirm. Stage separation successful. Stage separation. And just like clockwork, we have had Miko, stage one and stage two separation, and ignition of Electron's second stage. Coming up very shortly, we'll also see Electron's fairings separate and fall away. These two carbon composite halves form a protective nose cone over the tropic satellites, keeping them safe during ascent. Once we're in space, though, they're not needed as the forces on Electron are not nearly as great. So we can get rid of them and clear the way for payload separation. Now, for this mission, because we're headed to that 550 kilometre circular orbit straight away with stage two, we're leaving the fairing attached just a little bit longer than usual. That jettison event should be coming up in the next 20 seconds or so. And that's fairing separation confirmed. We are at four minutes into flight now, and coming up next is a process unique to Electron, battery hot swap. The pumps on Electron's Rutherford engines are powered by Electron pumps, which draw their energy from batteries. Once we deplete the batteries, they are dead weight that we don't want to carry all the way to orbit, so we eject the batteries and swap over to a fresh set in flight. That milestone is coming up just before seven minutes into the flight, so still a ways to go yet. So far for today's mission, we've had a perfect liftoff. We've cleared Max Q, had a good first stage burn and separation of Electron's first and second stages. Fairing has also separated as planned and now we're five minutes into the mission. So far, a nominal mission for coming to a storm near you. The second of two dedicated launches to deploy a storm monitoring constellation for NASA. Stage 
to propulsion still holding nominal. Guidance is nominal, 200 seconds remaining. Now we're coming up on that all-important battery hot swap. Powering engines with batteries is one of the things that makes the Rutherford engine special. The single stage two engine requires a longer duration than the stage one engines, so we have to hot swap the spent batteries to a third fresh one. This is one of the final gates to orbit, so let's listen into the operators in mission control for that call. Throttling down. And there you have it, a clean hot swap for the second stage Rutherford engine. Electron continues to orbit with around two minutes remaining in today's stage two burn. Speed is good, altitude is good, Electron is good, T plus seven minutes into the second Tropics mission for NASA. Just in time for the Atlantic hurricane season commencing at the start of June, these two CubeSats, along with the two that we launched just 18 days ago, will provide members of the meteorological community with hourly returns over the same storm to more accurately predict patterns, which could save the lives and livelihoods of millions of people. T plus eight minutes in, and we are now around 30 kilometres away from that 550 kilometre target orbit. As George mentioned in the video earlier, this stage two burn is taking us all the way to a circular orbit. Then we have that dog leg inclination change just over the equator to put stage us in the correct plane for payload down. deployment coming up at 33 minutes into the mission. Electron is continuing well at speeds of over nine. The second stage completes its burn because the nozzle glowing bright orange on it your screen right now mode. will turn back to grey as it cools down after the engine okay. shuts off. Off. Immediately after that shutdown, Electron's kick stage separates from the second stage, and in around one minute, the Curie engine will ignite and begin that plane change manoeuvre ahead of payload deployment. Again, Mission Control will call out these actions, so let's listen in for confirmation of SECO. Seco confirm. Stage three separation confirmed. Nominal transfer orbit achieved. And that is Seco confirmed as planned. The kick stage has also cleanly separated, ready for that final Curie burn in around 20 minutes from now, followed by payload deployment at T plus 33 minutes. Because this final burn and deployment of the Tropics CubeSats happens in a ground station blackout zone, we won't get live confirmation of those milestones. We also won't have live video footage of the deployment process. So here's a quick animation to show you what will be happening in orbit just 25 minutes from now.
Since we won't have live coverage of payload deployment, we'll take a short break from the broadcast and join you again in around T plus 45 minutes to provide an update on deployment and to confirm mission success. We'll leave mission control comms up during this coast phase so you can hear it as soon as it happens. We'll be back with you soon.
Expected curry ignition.
expected curry shut on. Expected payload deployment. CLD on range. Sorry, on mission. Disregard.
LDGC on mission. GCLD. Zone 5 requirements are completed. Copy, thank you. And um, just checking in at Romeo 7800, are you happy with its progress as well? Affirmative, it's in works, just warming up the skid a little bit more. Copy. Go ahead, uh, PLS.
great to have you back with us for the webcast of our 37th Electron launch. The Coming to a Storm Near You launch to deploy the final two satellites in NASA's storm monitoring tropics constellation. We had a flawless liftoff from the pad at Launch Complex 1 today and a nominal flight all the way through to kick stage separation as planned. Now, as mentioned, the final stage phase of today's launch, including the Curie engine burn for the plane change manoeuvre and payload deployment, took place in a ground station blackout zone. You wouldn't have been able to hear that over the nets, but we are thrilled to confirm that today's mission is yet another success. The kick stages Curie engine performed well, positioning the Tropic satellites at a 30 degree inclination for deployment. We have confirmation that the satellites have separated cleanly from their deployers and are now settling into their new homes on orbit, ready for the 2023 storm season. Congratulations to the launch team and to our mission partners at NASA. The Tropics Constellation is officially on orbit. We are so very proud to support this important mission and grateful to be entrusted by NASA once again to deliver mission success. So with that, we're going to close out today's live coverage, but don't forget to follow Rocket Lab and NASA on social media for more photos, videos and additional detail about today's mission. And to follow along NASA's tropics mission now that all of the spacecraft are on orbit, you can head to blogs.nasa.gov forward slash small satellites. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Rocket Lab Mission Control, signing off.